Las Vegas get a baseball team? The Oakland Athletics still have to make their official pitch to the MLB to move from the Bay to here, the site of the Tropicana Hotel. So this is where the nine acres of the ballpark would go, the southeast corner that's facing the airport. Nine acres for perspective, that's the size of the Bellagio Fountains. But is it big enough to hold a ballpark? Fox size Mike Allen looked at the concerns and challenges with the size. Yeah, it's a pretty small plot of land for a ballpark, Jacqueline, especially one that's going to have a retractable roof like this one would. The only MLB park, in fact, that has a smaller footprint is Target Field in Minneapolis. And they were, uh, when they were building that one, they didn't have to worry about putting in a retractable roof. When I heard nine acres, I, I, I did a double take, frankly. Uh, that is going to be a very, very difficult build. Gerald Poder is a professor of history at Lawrence University in Wisconsin and also author of a book about baseball stadium construction. He's skeptical about the ambitious $1.5 billion stadium the Athletics plan to build on the site of the Tropicana. And if you look at the renderings released last month by the A's, you'll notice a retractable roof. That can take up several acres on its own, since it needs a place to go if it's retracted. Only one MLB stadium's roof does not need a separate place to go. That's American Family Field in Milwaukee, which fans out instead of sliding out. This is a, you know, a, a, a roof that has a design that te probably takes up the minimum amount of space you would need for a roof like that. Also important to note, although Target Field, home of the Minnesota Twins, was built on a smaller plot of land than the Tropicana site, that does not have a roof. Along with concerns about a roof and where to put it, Padair also worries about parking. Anyone who has driven to Dodger Stadium for a game knows how difficult it can be to get in and out. Uh, it will be even more difficult in this ballpark because you're in the middle of the equivalent of a city. And of course, there's the issue of the $380 million pledged by the Nevada legislature. I asked Padere about the track record of teams that take public money to build their stadium and whether the city, county, and state wind up in the black, as promised by proponents of this stadium. They never do. They never make back the money, at least in the time that the proponents say they will. But still, Padere says he would be in favor of the team coming to Las Vegas if he lived here. All that said, I still advise cities to get major league franchises if they possibly can. He says a baseball team brings something you can't quite quantify with dollars and cents. They contribute a sense of what I call civic glue. They glue a community together. They bring people together. Now, the final question I asked Padere is whether or not the city of Las Vegas should want to welcome the A's or maybe hold out for an expansion team later this decade. That is a possibility that MLB Commissioner Rod Manfred has floated maybe by 2028. I was told by Padere it's kind of a bird in the hand situation. This might be the best opportunity for the A's to get an MLB franchise because you never know what could happen with expansion. Jacqueline? So it turns out with the A's, history was made tonight as they were playing against the Yankees. Tell us more about that game. Yeah, well, it's, this was only the 24th perfect game thrown in MLB history. For those who are not familiar, that's when 27 batters come up and 27 batters are put down. A pitcher, this was Domingo Herman for the New York Yankees, did not allow one athletic to reach base. Again, that's only been done 24 times in the more than 200,000 games in MLB history that have been played. That's since the 1870s, oh. so pretty big deal. Unfortunately for the A's, they yeah. were on the wrong side of it tonight. Ooh, but quite telling, certainly, tonight. Making history, though. Thank you so much, Mike.